Um, Did I, we lost it. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> when you recorded, it gave her the choice to continue or leave, and she's pressed leave by mistake. Sorry about that. I pressed the wrong button. So for me, um, making sure my time management is very crucial to my success in this business, right? Because once I don't get certain things right, um, it means that my Janista business will suffer as a result. So timekeeping and being disciplined. I know I still have a lot to do, Coach um, Steve is always on my case, but again, for, for my situation, it's quite different. So first of all, you have to assess the situation that you have and you have to work around because there are so many excuses you can make, right? When I joined Janista, my son was seven weeks old. Thank God for Zoom because there are times that I'm breastfeeding and my son just sleeps on my lap and I'm having a scoop or a carry back. Right. So first of all, you have to identify what is your own circumstance. Right? Everybody has an excuse try, uh, not to do it. Right. But what I did was I said that, listen, for mine, it's going to be quite difficult. The, the times I had meetings with Alan was always 12 midnight. Because there was no time I'm doing my scoops and carry back. So that's the only time that we, we were able to catch up and, you know, do accountability and all that 12 midnight. And then also having the right mindset is very important. For me, I had to win at this. There was no going back. My why was bigger, you know, and Joyce says something in the convention, the why behind the why. There was no way I was going to go back to work. It wasn't an option. Right from a young um, age, I've always wanted to um, own my own business. Right. So I knew that nine to five. Yeah, I need to do it to, you know, get the experience to to pay the bills. But for me, going back to work after my last child wasn't an option because I remember I had um, a manager um, who, who I mean, um, she didn't have any um, kids, but I had a challenging pregnancy. So which meant I had to have scans every two weeks and she wasn't understanding, you know, working from home was a big issue, even though the work was being done. You know, and for me, that was a no, no, I'm not going back to that job. I'm not going back to contract. I'm not going back to the city, jumping on trains, not seeing my, my kids. So I tried other businesses, you know, I tried, that's something most people don't know because I'm into the um, um, catering industry as well. So I, I make waffles for festivals and all that. So I was trying to open it up in, in a shopping center. You know, we had done the paperwork, everything was going through, it was just me raising the funds. Then COVID hit. Right, so which meant that I couldn't continue with that. So when my friend introduced this opportunity, I thought, wow, financial education, this is fantastic. You know, I tried it myself, so I believed in it. First of all, I borrowed Alan's faith because listen, I don't know whether it will work or not. There was a lot of things going on at that point, you know, a lot of schemes and all that. I knew it wasn't, you know, a pyramid scheme or anything of that sort, but I borrowed Alan's belief. You know, I saw his income, so I knew it was possible. So right from that time, my mind changed. And for me, one of the things that helped me was when I joined this business, I saw it as building my own business. I wasn't building Alan Palmer's business. I wasn't building Steve's hierarchy. No, it was my business. So if it would work, it depends on me. So I've always had that mentality and my team knows that. That listen, when when I know that the, the numbers have dropped, which this month has just been a roller coaster because I've had some weeks off and all that. I am starting again. I always lead by example because people will copy. People will not copy what you say. People will copy what you do. So leading from the front is something that for me is, is written everywhere. I need to lead from my, for my team have to copy what I'm doing. Right, so now I've recruited someone over the weekend, you know, I've put it on there, I've made a lot of noise. Other people have started putting their yeses. If you don't start, your team will not start. They won't do it at all. Mm. So from the front, very important, making sure that you know, time management is crucial and being disciplined. And then my mindset, I know that this thing has to work. In fact, what even keeps me going is the fact that I had people, I had family who told me that, listen, this thing is not going to work. It's a pyramid scheme. And these are intelligent people. I've, I've, they've been on the bombs. They've been everywhere, but they keep, you know, they still go at it. So for me, I need to prove those people wrong. 
there are people who called me after, you know, after five months of being a vice president and asked me, are you sure you don't still want to come back to work? You don't want to come back to um, a contract? I mean, what? And I said, what do you mean by that? I'm working, I'm full time in Genesta. So it means they still don't believe in the business. So I need to prove those people wrong. I need to show them that Genesta works. My children believe in it. My children are telling me day in, day out that, listen, no matter what we become, we are going to be part of Genesta. My daughter said, I can't wait to be 18 to join Genesta. So I can't let those people down. I cannot let my children, I cannot let my husband. My husband allowed me to start the business, but I remember what Alan asked me to do. Alan told me to give him my first check. You know, when, I mean, he allowed me, but maybe he's not sure, but he never said anything, right? By the time I gave him that check, he was like, okay, wow. All of a sudden, believe, and that's natural. It's something that happens. So for me, it was all about winning at um, this business. It wasn't about anything else. I need to win. And I saw that we help families genuinely. I sit on Zoom with clients when I started. I sit on Zoom with clients, husband and wife hugging each other after an appointment. That brings me more satisfaction than any money. They're saying, thank you, Betty. You've given us hope. You know, after um, I, my mortgage was going to be paid after 70 years. Now you've shown me that, you know, by 50 something years old, my mortgage will be paid. So is that bringing hope? to people. So these are the things that have kept me going, right? To becoming an EVP, to becoming, you know, an SVP. These are the things that I've held up to, I've held on to, which has helped me in my journey so far. What are the, what are the kind of two or three things uh, that, you know, that you do every day as fundamentals to keep your business moving forward? So um, daily affirmations, which um, I really got from um, um, the late Roger, you know, who I saw his CCMP and he had it on there. Your daily affirmations is very important. I picked that up. Also, attending power hour. I know Steve has been on my case forever, you know, but it works because especially for me, I'm so, so busy. You know, children are pulling you here. You are dropping a lesson. You are a mother, you are a wife. It's just been so busy. So that is the dedicated time. Even though I, sometimes I don't even attend the company, I have 30 minutes of making calls. Because that's the only time. If you don't dedicate that time, it won't happen. Trust me, no matter how disciplined you are, it will just not happen. And we have the platform in Genesta where we have that look. Anytime I jump on that call, you know, you see other people, even if you don't have a list, you would write a list down because you see other people making calls and you don't want to be left out and you don't want to, you know, lie and say, listen, I got a yes when you know you haven't gotten a yes. Or Steve is saying today we are doing go for no, right? You have to, you have to be truthful to yourself and to your team as well. So that is the second thing making sure that I jump on um, a power hour and then training. One thing that I learned from Coach Steve, so which I'm doing is I've started developing myself as a leader, you know, reading the books that has been recommended. I've fallen so much in love with Coach. I've read it over and over. And there's something in my mindset, my mindset that has shifted. Trust me. I had to go back to my drawing board. I had to review my CCMP and my goals for the rest of the year listening to a lot of people, Lisa, you know, some Primerica greats. I'm going back and listening to these messages. It's keeping my belief up there. Because trust me, if your belief is not high up there, it affects the team. Because when everything is down, they come to you and your belief is not there. So what are you telling them? And they can see through you. They're like, oh, it's not even working for Betty. It's not working the company now, nah, things are not going well. But when they come and I'm telling them, listen, Lisa, do you know how much Lisa and this is where um, 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 Genesta is going? Because my belief is high up there. I'm focused on what is ahead, not what is happening now. Because I know that Genesta is going somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Great stuff, Betty. Uh, any, uh, anybody else got some thoughts or questions? Yeah, Betty. Oh, uh, oh, go on. Uh, go on, Kevin. Uh, so, yeah, what what would you say was um, some of the hardest uh, decisions that you had to make along the way? Okay, that's a very good question, Kevin. 
So first of all, I mean, going full time with Janista. Mm. Do I make it seem so simple? It was quite, you know, a difficult decision because which meant that you can't take on anything. This is what you're going to do full time, right? And for me, that fear factor was still there somewhere <laughs> that, hey, what if it doesn't work? Hey, what if, what will people say? You know, but at the end of the day, I had that part of me also telling me that, listen, I have to win by all means at all costs. You know, so that was a, a big decision for myself, you know, especially when I was going full time. The second biggest one was management exchange. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a big thing for me because I thought I had a good team in place. You know, Joyce, I was going with Joyce and this is the person going to help me to explode my business. And then I'm, I'm being told about, you have to do management exchange, you know, but I turned it into a positive. I saw it as giving 10% as a tithe because I'm a Christian and we do that. So I just thought, yeah. And then the rest of the 90 will be blessed. That's how I see it. So again, it was quite tough, but once I understood it, I was able to freely um, um, give it out. So those are the two biggest that mm. I've had to do. Yeah. Good morning, Kev. Bella, uh, Ben. Uh, good morning, Betty, and good morning, all. Um, we used to say that um, you know your education background, your sex, or uh, your you know everything doesn't matter. But time to time, I doubt myself, uh, Betty. Uh, what do you say about that? You know, like. Uh, uh, you know, times to time this comes back. I, will, <laughs> I can do it, or I cannot do it. Um, any any thoughts on this? Okay, so are you trying to say that it favors more women than men, or is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, just doubting my ability sometimes. Yeah, oh, your ability. Yeah, you know, also I I think that in fact, as a person, I'm always arguing with Alan that it favors men even more than women, right? Because I see Alan being served breakfast, and I'm like. Listen, who's, who's, who's serving me breakfast? I've had to make breath, breakfast and jump on meetings. Sometimes I'm like, listen, Alan, we do, as women, we do more than that. We are wives. We are looking after children. We are cooks. We are doing all sorts, cleaning all sorts. Now, and here is me seeing uh, Andrea coming to serve Alan coffee, you know, at 11 o'clock. I'm like, okay. You know, so what I have to say about that is that don't doubt yourself right and you know what it happens sometimes it does happen it will cross your mind that can you really even do this are you sure you are in the right thing but you need to make sure that you are keeping yourself motivated a with the trainings take it seriously take notes i'm going back to some of the notes sometimes you know i wake up and if i have any um, um fear anxiety anything like that you go back to your notes i listen to positive things right and again, as I said, I've started listening to American greats. You know, they just had their convention. I'm following closely Tony Apo. So many people who are doing incredibly well in, in Primerica. So I'm listening to these people. You know, it, it gets your hope up there that you are hopeful because these things, okay, especially when you have a downtime in the business, you start doubting, you start asking all sorts of questions, but you need to make sure you are listening constantly. I'm listening to Jeff, you know, I'm reading his book. I've seen where Jeff came from because I've seen in Prime America people five years, they didn't do anything, but all of a sudden now they are millionaires. So everybody has a different path. It's just making sure that you keep at it. You know, I came in and it was a fast coach, right? Because I jumped on and it was, you know, from one thing, group leader, EVP, SVP. Alan Palmer, however, took 10 years, but he's also an SVP. So people have different paths, but you just need to make sure that you are staying on that path and not doubting yourself. And you can only do that by your daily affirmations. One of the, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm always saying when the going gets tough, because trust me, SVP at some point I gave up. I said, no, I can't do it. I said, I can't do it. This is too much because I was barely sleeping. I can't do it. No, I'll do it the following month. That's what I told myself. I said, no, no, no. I'll do it the following month. Now I've built momentum the following month. Mm -hmm. And a good friend told me that, listen, 
every month poses its challenge, its own challenge. And I'm glad I listened to it because I know I couldn't have done it the following month. So that was my opportunity. So when the opportunity comes, you need to grasp it. You need to do it with everything that is within you. And again, it goes back to your CCMP, your why. What is my why for joining Genista? I wanted to build a legacy for my family. I can't feel my children. They see Genista, Genista, Genista everywhere. They said, mommy is all about Genista, Genista until they actually even understood the business. So that is what keeps me, the why behind the why. Why I have a charity back home. Am I going to let these people down? Because as I, um, when I was going, you know, when I was working as an employee, I could help just a certain number. Now I'm able to help more because I can set a target and achieve it within a week and use that money to help those people back in Africa. So that keeps me going. So you need to go back, maybe revisit your CCMP. What is the why for joining Genista? Get these tips, the CDs. Make sure you soak it because you become that. You are filled with so much positivity. When the negative thoughts come in, they just go through the other ear. So you just need to keep remembering. You know, you need to remind yourself, this is why I joined Genesis. I can do it. I can in your daily affirmations, keeping at it. And it's not just saying it, but you need to do the work as well. Because faith without work is dead. A lot of people say things. Talk is cheap. But you need to actually then go and do it because it will not be handed to you on a silver platter. SVP, going for that SVP was a dire. That is what I call it. A lot of people didn't believe I could do it, right? Because it was a dire. It was, but I had to put every breath that was in me. I had to put it to it because I knew that I had to do it. Right. So I hope that that um, answers your um, question. Ben. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Betty. That's, <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking what I'm going to do now. <laughs> <laughs> Starting is the most important thing, starting gradually, you know, just jumping on power hour, getting your first year. Sometimes you'll be so lonely because it will just be you putting your ears on there. But it doesn't matter. Just start. Someone will copy. Someone will come along. Trust me, someone will come along. I remember, and Steve will tell you, this January, I recruited um, only two people. But come February, I started, I led from the front. You know, I recruited eight people. And boom, came the SVP promotion from that leg. Oh, thank you, Betty. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> my question is sort of um, not really formulated, but that whole um, zone of, you know, you said you took however many months, short months, and Alan Palmer took 10 years. But I suppose what I'm asking is, what was that moment? I think you probably just said it, it was the legacy, building the legacy. But, you know, because we all have a different journey, it's, it's that, that light bulb moment, isn't it, that really changes it for all of us on our individual journeys. And, um, you know, I suppose we're all doing the next step and trying to find out what we have to do next. But for you, can you remember that moment where it was just like, that's it? Yes, and that was when um, Coach Steve was talking about the power of three at the end of a Saturday training. I remember, because I had been very, I had not been coachable <laughs> up until that point. You know, I just joined the business and I've not done anything. I've not plugged into any meetings. I said, listen, I'll take it up later when my son is, you know, six months old. But I, one day I just logged into the meeting. I can't even remember what he was talking about. You know, I was distracted. But at the end of it, I had the power of three. That if you bring your three, you help them to get the three, that compounding effect. I said, wow, this is fantastic. So it means that I don't have to work forever. There will be some point where I'm just going around my, you know, my base shops or my hierarchies and just giving training, mentoring and coaching. And that is what I like. I did not join Genista to work forever. No, I joined Genista to put my head down, get the work done. And in the next six to 10 years or however many years, 
I enjoy. Putting the building blocks, but that power of three, I thought, I, I, I saw it to be something else. I said, what a fantastic, you know, opportunity to build distribution. I've not seen any company like that, that offers this opportunity. Yeah, so the compounding effect. That was it. Mm -hmm. That is what changed everything. And from that point, I saw it. From that point, I was just maybe about two weeks in the business. I saw it as I'm building my own business. I'm not building anybody else's business. So I took control. I was going to Alan. I was chasing after him, making sure that I report my accountability. I did this, Alan, I did, what should I do? You know, I was, at that point, I was so coachable to a fault. I was the one chasing him. You know, most of the times it's the other way, but I was the one chasing him because I saw it, no, I need to quickly get to EVP. I need to get to, you know, um, my next level, get to team leader, senior team leader. I did team leader within two weeks because I had a month, but two weeks I didn't do anything. I said, no, I need to get this team leader done. So from that point, it was just, you know, plugging in and making sure that compounding effect. And that is what still carries me. Sometimes I'll just go on my board and I'll write, okay, so if I have 20 business writers doing this X amount, and I see them like just 20 business writers, even writing a thousand pounds a month, trust me on how much you take home. And if you do your one appointment, even if you do two appointments in a month or four appointments in a month, Trust me, you are taking home over 20 grand. I'm always working those figures out. That compound effect is huge. Yeah. It's just making sure the building blocks are there. So did you, in all honesty, did you go searching for that? Or did you did that come, for, come to you, if you like? Do you know what I mean? Because I think the people on this call, I'm just wondering, you know, have they heard it before? Or have they got to go searching for it again to drill down? That's my question. For me, it came to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did not go, but, you know, different people react to different things. Mm -hmm. Some people, you need to go search for it mm -hmm. once you hear it. You need to go and search for it. And that is through company, you know, calls, you know, you hear someone say something, all of a sudden the pin will just drop. That's why you can't take any moments we have in Genesta for granted. I picked so many things from the convention. Yeah. It can be even just going back to, you know, the Primerica grades, that's something I've started. We had them for that period of time. But there were times that, you know, I was busy looking after the children and there were so many things going on. So I've had to go back. Because I feel I've missed so many things from Joe Ward, from all the other great speakers we had. Yeah. So some people, you need to go searching for it. Yeah. Uh, and what you're, here, you're saying, Betty, um, I think it's that exposure that you put yourself in. And I, I think, um, you know, it's being at everything, isn't it? It's being at the, the Sunday night, 10 o'clock, it's be, being on all those things and hearing, uh, hearing everything that people are saying and then that feeding of yourself from, um, yeah, what you listen to. And, but I think that's uh, in terms of a, an encouragement for everybody. I think at that point, if, if where, or if you find yourself stuck, you've just got to do that exposure, drill down and, and, and go searching as well. Yeah. And I think for me, I remember when I saw SVP Barat, I didn't know him, I'd never, but I saw someone do a hundred. I said, what? Recruiting one month? What? It means I can do it, there's a possibility. Once I see someone do something, I feel I can also do it. I tell myself they don't have two heads. Mm -hmm. Just that they are doing something that other people are not doing. If Barbara has done, which is my next challenge, if Barbara has done 100K, I can do it. But Barbara is doing something I'm not doing. And I know what she's doing that I'm not doing. I know. And I know if I go do that, I will get the 100K ring. And what I is know. that, Betty? Yeah, the appointment. Barbara is working her socks off. Barbara is seeing a lot of appointments. Barbara is 85321. She's an example. She's replacing appointment. I have spoken to her. Her work ethic is something else. And I know I'm not doing that. 
And before I tell myself, oh, the children, oh yeah, I'll make all the excuses. No worry, I'll get to that point. Let Jaden, you know, go to full time school. No, but I'm not waiting any longer because I know I can do it around the children. It's not impossible. So I tell myself, once someone hits a milestone, I can do it as well. So I need to eliminate all the excuses. Barbara did it just by herself. And hey, not only has she hit the 100K income, but she's gotten a very good income out of that, month in, month, month out, and she's still doing it. So I think that is something that we need to encourage ourselves. The excuses are too many. I have them. Trust me, I have the excuses. When Steve comes after me, oh my goodness, I'm like, Steve just doesn't get it. That's you know. Doesn't know I have a two-year-old. He doesn't know I have this. I'm, Alan just doesn't get it. But when people have been all these greats we hear about, they never tell us where they have children, they don't have, they are doing this. No one knows. All they know is they are winners. So no one wants to know your story. No one cares about what is going around you. Mm. Not that they are not considerate, but it's just that when people win, Richard Branson, no one knows what happened around him when he was winning or when he started. No one knows about all these people. Tony Apo, I don't know how many children and all that. All I know is Tony had kids, yeah, was, you know, a nurse, blah, blah, blah. But Tony is winning now. That is what we know. So the excuses will come, trust me, but we need to overcome. To be a winner, you need to make sure that you overcome all those hurdles. So, but Betty, it, it sounds to me like um, in two years, you really haven't made any mistakes. Um, have you? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I'm cracking up right now. <laughs> oh sounds like you've had this perfect two years. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> I, I'm just wondering, <laughs> have, have, you know, has there been any? It just feels like perfection and... Yeah. I'm just like, oh, it, something tells me it just can't have been. So I don't know if you could help us, <laughs> you know, has it just been a journey of perfection along the way? No way. I even made a lot of mistakes last week and the week before. You should call Alan. It would be like, oh, man, that woman is something else. You know, we've had our ups and downs. I fight with him. You know, all the time, I'm, I'm always challenging him. Why should I do that? Why should I jump on power? Why should I do that? Kids are on holidays. So listen, it's not been a smooth road. It's not been perfect throughout. Let me tell you, there are times that I know that I've let my own self down. There is no reason why I couldn't even have hit a 100K ring in this convention. I'm telling you the truth because of the clientele I have. I am in the five-star market. Once I joined this business, it wasn't just about working hard, but working smart as well. So I realized that the niche market, not that you know, we don't want to see three, two, one star, but I'm thinking, why should I see five, three star families or 10 and uh, three star families when I can see just one star looking at my circumstance that I have to pick the kids, I have to do this, I have limited time. So I said, no, I'm going to be in the five star market, nothing less than that, because those meetings were interesting. It brought me a lot of joy and they were not canceling their protection. But the number I keep telling Steve that I know I see less people than anybody in this company, trust me on that. But once I see a client, I'm getting 140 to 200 pounds premium. So imagine Ooh. I'm going on the 85321. There's no reason I couldn't have hit the 100K ring. But again, it's about sometimes being lazy. The excuses, telling myself that, oh, they should understand, the company should understand. I have a two-year-old, I have three kids, I'm a wife. Listen, my husband is working full-time. My husband is not joint. Other people who are doing well, they are joint with their partners in the business. I tell myself all those things to comfort me. But now I'm going back to that drawing board and challenging myself to go back to that 85321. You know, sometimes I get the referrals. I'm not calling them straight away. It goes cold. I get the referrals, but I'm not calling them straight away because I become lazy at some point. And it goes cold. I call them, oh, I was expecting your call the week before. And they've lost interest. 
So I've missed out on appointment. Sometimes not even following up, you know, vitality. There are mistakes that I've made. Team members who have joined, I knew I should have taken a different approach. Team members who joined, I didn't show so much care to. They left at some point. So as for mistakes, I've made more than anybody else in this business. I'm, trust me on that. Because I know the results, what, where I should have been by now. And I'm beating myself up. So I'm having to start all over again and making mm. sure I've identified where I may. That's why it's good to sit back as a leader and look at where you went wrong. Mm. What did you not do? These things you are preaching, are you doing it to yourself? Yes, you are getting the referrals by you calling. Are you making sure that you have the 85321? I'm always telling myself, Steve doesn't just understand. Steve is telling me that 85321 like Joyce, but Joyce doesn't have any children. Joyce is not married. I tell myself that to comfort myself. But Steve is trying to help me to hit the 100K. And if I had followed it, this convention, not only would I have gotten the SVP, but I could have gotten the 100K ring. So these are some of the mistakes I can mention. Not being coachable. First two weeks, Alan will tell you, no. I said, what does he know as a chef? Tell me, what does he know? No, I'm not listening to you. <laughs> Even up, up till now, sometimes I'm not coachable. I'm like, don't tell me that, Alan. No, 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 you don't understand. I can't do power hour five days a week. No, 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 you don't understand. You are being served tea at 11 o'clock, breakfast, everything, and you're telling me what? I'm a wife. So not being coach, I'm even Steve sometimes, you know, <laughs> he's been very nice to me, but we have a few things we need to sort out. <laughs> and this is me being, you know, open and vulnerable. So as for mistakes, I've made a lot. Mm. The road hasn't been that smooth. I've had my ups and downs. But starting is the most important thing. I'm always starting again. I'm always, now I have to start again. So I hope that answers your question, Kevin. Yeah, it does. That's really helpful. Because sometimes, like you said, you just see all the successes and you don't see some of the issues going on behind the scenes. And I think uh, it's helpful because we're all living a life and, um, you know, it's good to hear that story. So, and even Sometimes, um, Kevin, have even dealing with people, you know, people are people. Sometimes I feel used. There was a period where I felt that clients were just using me. And that is when, you know, I had not stayed in the five-star market. I'm thinking, why? I've shown you all these things. All you have to do is just you know, take that protection. You know, all these things I've helped you with if you had to pay, you know, and, it, and it's painful sometimes. But the good ones are also there. Mm. So it's not everyone. So I had to tell myself, yeah, people are people. So you have people who just... Just no, ha ha not have any valid reason, but just not go with you, which is the fact of life. So I move on and quickly, you know, make sure that I see someone who just get my energy up again. I've got, I've got a question for you, Betty. When you were going for your SVP, your 35 by 35, how many, how like, sort of percentage wise would you say that was it was stuff that you did personally leading from the front and how many kind of team members did you have that were, were writing business as well so i would say it was 50 50 share you know so again it was leading from the front because remember two recruits to eight recruits but what really helped me were was the fact that they were all new because remember the old people they just said someone called me said oh looks like Janista is having a downtime at the minute. So it means that they had already settled with that. So I knew that this mindset, I don't have time to now change it around. No, you come on to trainings and gradually something will happen to you. But I didn't want to be affected by their own negative mindset. So I looked for new, fresh blood, new people. And I separated them from the main group. So it's only after that, if they asked me, oh, so you have so many people on Telegram. Where are all of them? It's only after. So they thought there was a lot of movement on that group. Momentum. You know, someone gets a yes and they are shouting. Someone recruits someone and it's just, it was just, and that is the environment I needed to stay focused. Because if you have people, they won't even welcome any, they won't do anything. Nah, it just doesn't work. It affects you as a leader. So you need to surround yourself. You need to be in an, an environment. And in Genesis, the only way you can do it is when you are constantly recruiting. That's the only way. 
that's the only because trust me the old people can set you back <laughs> they can frustrate you they can demoralize you suck everything out of you they call you they're asking you about all sorts of questions you need the fresh ones who will come in and learn and sometimes you know that you've made mistakes with the old ones you know it and you need to own up to it and tell yourself that with these new people i'm not going i'm going to stay coachable to what steve says when they join i'm not going to do their financial game plan i'm actually going to get three people under them so you need to make sure you're constantly revising and correcting errors that you have made you can, if something is not working, it means that you need to change the way you are working. You can't follow the same route and get, expect to get a different result. It doesn't, it, something has to change. So I identified that I had six people who became team leader that month, six. And then I had three people who were writing business, including a new person who had just joined. So Let's that check. was what helped me. Uh, out of the 35,000, uh, you did 20,000 of it. 20, yeah. A bit more than half. So about 65%, yeah, was from me. So leading from the front. So they see, and new people, they see that energy. Wow, this person is going for it. They also want to, you know, follow the same route. But when they come on there, you expect them to do everything. That is when they have control over you and they will let you down. Until you have gotten to that stage where, Steve is, listen, we have to constantly lead from the front. And even with Steve, I mean, he's leading from the front in so many ways. You know, at that time, at that point, there's a different challenge, you know, you take on. But for now, for where we are all at, we need to constantly lead from the front. Barbara is an example. That's what she's doing. Joyce as well. You know, all the people who are doing well in the business, that's, what, that's the route they are taking. It's interesting that Daryl Harper did exactly the same to become an SVP. He, uh, wow. he basically got tired of his people um, and uh, he, he rang me. I remember him saying, and I didn't agree with him at the time, but thankfully he didn't listen to me. Um, but he, he started a new fresh group with new people. He found that the older people were infecting the new people. So, uh, so that he did exactly the same, set up a new, and then everyone's screaming at him, why can't we be with this new group of people? Mm -hmm. And you know what Daryl's like? Well, he told him, told him straight. Oh, interesting. Change your people. Mm -hmm. You need to. And that's why, you know, Steve, you always said the magic 17. Before I used to think, what is Steve talking about? But that, there's no two ways about it. You know, I used to think Steve said four deep, all sorts. I'm like, what, does, what is Steve trying to say? But the magic number is 17. Until you are recruiting 17, it's very difficult yeah. to find that winner. That's the honest truth. So we need to go back to basics. We need to, our business is built on recruiting. If you want to be able to hit that SVP, hit that 100K, you need to recruit. I don't know any other way. Because you recruit, they bring their three. It needs to constantly happen. It's like a conveying belt. It needs to constantly. You know, you're recruiting, recruiting. And trust me, once the recruitment comes in, the promotion comes in, the money will come anyway. Because during that period, that's why I'm waiting. I'm looking forward to doing my next 35 by 35 again. Because I made a lot of money in that period at as well. I had not even calculated till SVP Bevin called me said, do you know how much you have made? I know I had made a lot of money because he's a numbers person, which is very important as well. You need to know the numbers. I went to visit him recently because I wanted to, you know, understand how he works. And in his office, he had from 2018, 2019, all his figures written down. I came back and I started writing my figures and I said, wow, you know, as a team leader, as a senior team leader, group leader, I was doing a lot. So why can't I do it now? What has changed? Or is it that I've arrived? So when you say by your numbers, what do you mean? What numbers do you write? So down? how many recruits you got from January to December in 2019, 2020, 2021? And he's comparing. So he's looking at the curve. Is it going up, going down? What's happening? It's very important to monitor because it reminds you because once I did that, I realized that, wow, whilst I was going for EVP, I was really seeing a lot of clients and doing a lot of business. Apart from 35 by 35, I had not done that amount of business 
since I became an EVP than when I was a team leader and senior team leader. So I had to ask myself, is it that I've arrived now? Or what's happening to me? What's happening to my business? Am I going to get to my destination if I continue this way? You know, because there was a roller coaster there. So knowing your numbers is very important. And that's what helped me with um, 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 SVP. Because if you don't know your numbers, you're all over the place. You don't know what's going on, what's, what is being written, but we were monitoring it like twice a day. But then but when I saw the bigger picture uh, from Devin, that helped me. Your 20,000 for SVP, was that your base shop or um, that was just you personally? That was me personally. Wow. That was me personally. That is, wow. And trust me, it wasn't, I won't say I, I have the figure somewhere, but it wasn't even more than 25 clients, maybe about 20 clients. But again, as I said, I'm in the five-star market. So imagine you've seen 20 clients, maybe 18. I'll, I'll check it and then let you know. About 18 clients got me that 20,000. So, you know, people might say, oh, you did a lot of work. Yes, I did a lot of work. But imagine if it was a three-star. <laughs> You know, market you were in because there was no one who took less than a hundred pounds. No one, I can't remember anybody who did less than a hundred pounds premium. So that really helps being in the right market for uh, 35 by 35. If you are not in the right market, I wonder how you do it. Especially if you don't have, for me, I did not have any EVP under myself. So that was, that is the only way. There's no, so if you're on here, you don't have, and you're going for it, which is possible, you need to start working in the five-star market. There's no other way because they would also give you um, um, their list. You know, they will recommend people to you. The referrals will be there. It's easy to get it. So I, I was working off referrals, replacing appointment with appointment. That's how it was working. But three star, they will tell you, we need to think about it. We need to come back. And they'll give you people who are like themselves. But five star, once they see what we can do, they are referring people like themselves. And, and Betty, do you use, um, do you keep track of your clients or electronically or in uh, using the card system? So I use both. Before I was doing electronically, it wasn't helping me. Steve just you know, help me with all the things you need to do because I need to be more organized because sometimes I'm all over the place. That's, that's yeah. one of the it's things I'm working on. thing, isn't it, to be able to be able to stop and then know where you come back to. I should yeah. imagine with three children and that and that. Yeah. So that's like, yeah, that's a really... Um, so I'm going back to using um, Steve's recommendation, you know, so that I can see it because sometimes I jump on power hour and I'm all over the place because it's electronic, it's all over the place. But I see Alan just take his box and he's able to call people and it's easier. I see Steve calling, calling, and sometimes I run out of people and I'm like, where is it? I can't remember. I put it here, all sorts. It's all over the place. So I'll do both. But if I have it arranged, then, you know, there's more people because there are people that, you know, along the line, I'm like, oh, I was supposed to call this person. I forgot, you know, to call them. And sometimes it goes cold. So being organized is part of, you know, winning in this business being organized is very very important barbara is super organized super organized that's why she's getting those results super organized she never used to be uh -huh. <laughs> she, she is a, a, a box or because i think she's more electronic isn't she she's very electronic but she has the box as well yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. she uses both but she's very electronic mm. but i i think I'll, i'm going back to the box yeah, go back to the world. Yeah, because I can see it. You know, electronic is sometimes all over the place for me. I'll go back. Because I want to be accountable to my own self. Okay. Betty, how, how many of your recruits go from uh, just being a recruit to being licensed to being a team leader? So I will say that before I became an EVP, the ratio was like 80 80 percent again that's why i've had to go back on the figures but once i became an evp yeah we're promoting people but no i'll say 50 50 kind of thing you know svp time it went up but it's gone down again so i know i'm doing something wrong 
So I'm, I've had to go back on the drawing board and change things around. Mm -hmm. But when I was going for EVP was 80, 80, 80, 20. 80% 80 of the people coming on were going to, you know, team leader. Because that was it. When you join my team, they'll tell you that ah, you need to get a team leader because that's what we sell. We sell the team leader. But again, with the affiliates coming in, it becomes more, you know, of a challenge because you have some people who just join us, introduce us, right? And, and they don't want to move. But I've had people who have joined us, introduce us, who have now gone to be a license. But now I'm selling the license because for me to raise, I'm keen on raising 10, 10 key leaders by the end of the year. That's what I'm selling to my team. 10 people in my business making a thousand pounds minimum a month. So I'm looking for those people and it comes from recruiting new new blood and making sure they are licensed and they get a team leader and they just run. How many of the people who get licensed go on to team leader? So once you get licensed, um, it's easier, but I would say maybe about 50%. Because our strategy is different. I realized that sometimes when people actually get licensed after their first month of joining Genista, it takes more time for them to become team leader for some reason. Mm -hmm. But when they join and you get them to team leader, being licensed at the same time, it's easier for me, for my experience, because that's what I was taught when I joined the business. You know, Alan will get you to team leader within the first 30 days and licensed at the same time. So maybe you are licensed maybe three weeks before you even become, one week before you become a team leader. So it's all done together, it's easier. So you are selling, being licensed and you are selling the team leader to them. I find that more easier than when you license people, sometimes, you know, it, it, I don't know, it takes them, especially if they don't hit the team leader in the first month, it takes a bit of time. And they keep telling them that if they miss it, even by 400, oh, I'll try the following month because I'm writing the business. So let me see if I can understand that right. So to get them licensed and team leader together, mm -hmm. does that mean you're splitting the business with team yes. leaders? So they're actually writing 3,000 pounds to the business because yes. 1,500 euros, 1,500 pounds. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that helps. I mean, when I joined, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. When I was getting to EVP, that's what we're doing. And I, I tell them it's like a seed. You know, you saw it will come back to you because when you start recruiting as well, you are splitting with them. So no one loses. Mm -hmm. Because I remember the, the people that I had, if Alan had not written the business, it would have been difficult for me to write it because some were very close friends. You know, you want people, the good thing about Jen, you want people to be transparent. You want to do what is right. I sometimes sit in appointment, I'm observing people and I know they know them. Because it doesn't, the story doesn't match. It doesn't follow through. Because they are not, you know, telling them about a credit card or a loan. It doesn't add up. It's because they know the people. Because remember, it's your warm market you are bringing in initially. So it's easier for your upline or your trainer. It's easier for your upline or your trainer to write the business and split. Getting half is better than not getting anything. Yeah, so you wouldn't have them in that appointment with you. It would just be you. Yeah. No, sometimes I get them to watch the KTP up until the KTP and they go off when we are taking personal information. <clears throat> That's how <clears throat> mine was done. Alan trained me on the KTP using my own people, but I was asked to jump out of the meeting when he was taking the personal information. Some people even don't mind. You ask them. Some people are like, no, I don't mind. Mamusa times is easier. So we get someone else to observe. So we just shuffle things around within the team. Because I feel that you get more results when it's not in their own market. I know some people are different about it, but for, for me, you know, for the Spartans hierarchy, that is what has helped us. And my own sister, I know everything about my sister's finance, but no, Alan was the one you know, who, because emotions are in place and all sorts. Do you get it? But I think you have to take it case by case. Yeah, so just to clarify what, uh, what she's talking about there is if you've got two recruits and they're nervous about watching their own 
families, if you like, finances come together, just swap them over. So swap the travel double so they're in uh, different markets. But they get a split sale from their original referral. Yes. Just to clarify. Yeah. yeah. Good, good. Time for one more. Yeah, so what's the uh, best advice that you can give us today, Betty, for this week? How, how do we go on from here? What's the best advice you can give us? So starting is the most important thing. That's what I would say. Yeah, let's eliminate all excuses. Let's go back to the drawing board. Go back to your CCMP. What is the why behind the why for joining Genista? Jump on power hour. Start. Even if it's two people you will call, just start. Even if it's 30 minutes, you jump on. You don't have to jump on the whole hour. Just jump on for 30 minutes as a starter and then build it from there. Mm. Yeah, and then I would say to everybody, every EVP, the opportunity is here to become an SVP. I don't know if Jeff will extend it again, but listen, when opportunity presents itself, try your very best to achieve it. Even if you don't hit it, trust me, in that process, you make good money. Even imagine you hit even 15 by 15, make good money out of it. And that's what I told myself. Mine was all about pushing Alan. And I said to myself, listen, if I hit 35, fantastic. But even if I hit 20, I'll make a good 10,000 pounds. And we all need money, right? So make sure the opportunity has presented itself. Don't say, no, 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 I will wait till next year. No, no, no. You need to attempt. Mm. As if your life depends on it. Tell yourself, I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. Alan Palmer doesn't have two heads. It's only one head. So if he can do it, I can also do it. But it starts from you starting to do the work itself. Power hour, go back. Look at your appointment, 85321. Just say, yeah, they keep telling us five star, five star, five star. I'm in a three star. No, just say, no, I'm going to look for a five star. Remember, a three star can lead you to a five star. Starting where you are is okay. But making sure that you move from that market is very, very crucial. Mm. Because you can tell yourself, no, I would rather do three star. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll do more than that. <clears throat> what they require. Yeah. But no, stay in a five star market. Stay in. That's the niche group in Janista. And it's easier. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a nice appointment to be in. Because they ask very intelligent questions. The, the rapport is there. You know, they are excited about what you have to show. If there's no excitement about showing fortnightly, I mean, for me, if I'm not showing the fortnightly, it's a bit of an issue in an appointment because that is where the excitement is so high. Wow, wow, I didn't know about this. But if I'm not showing that life cover, listen, everybody can go on the internet or whatever and get it. But we make a difference to that five-star market. So make sure that you stay in that five-star start. Maybe you can't do eight, five, three, two, one, but start from even four and start building on it. Great. Because it is overwhelming. Ah. But start from somewhere. So starting is the most important. Do not postpone. Don't tell yourself, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start next month. Yeah, yeah. Let me put a lot of things in place. Or the admin puts that on the side. Trust me. Because during 35, I, thought, I was paying someone a thousand grand. I've been paying that person since. And the money was available to pay an admin to take care of that. But you start doing the work. Yeah, it doesn't put, yeah, vitality, all those things aside. Start seeing the client. Trust me, if you make the money, you can pay anybody. You can even have two people in your business to help you. <laughs> yeah, we can all do it, guys. We can all yeah. do it. We can all do it. And I know because I've heard from Kevin, I've, I've seen your numbers before. Listen, and it can be done. But you need to just motivate yourself. You need to get up there and just do it. So that we can make sure that that um, that um, forty pounds is being because we have a great opportunity forty pounds, you know. But don't start with just the business. You need to go back to recruiting. That mm. is that is the first, you know, um, 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 place to start recruiting people. Maybe you haven't recruited before. It doesn't matter. Start start speaking to people, prospecting people. Three years who said no. Go back to them and call them. It will be a yes. It's just 40 pounds. I've even, one thing we've started doing is if you go on your IBA tracker, 
you know there are some people still showing you have one, two, three, four, five tabs. Just start going on there and tell them because it was 140 before. We got a recruit last week from it. So we are just telling them that. Oh, and the person said, oh, wow. You know, at that time, I had not received my indefinite from, um, from the home office. I have it now. Because we don't write a story behind it, sometimes we, we forget what it was. So we're just randomly calling people from that list. And she said, oh, now I have it back. 40 pounds, I will join. Is that on Genestar Online? Yes, Janice Online. So uh, uh, explain where it is, the IBA track. But let me show you. I'm going to show you. <clears throat> Anna, you'll need to make a co-host. Okay. I use this one. Recruit, recruit. Can I share? Okay. Yeah. So I use this tab, this is for starters, the recruit IBAs. So as you can see, we have three tabs here. Yeah, I'm sure because I've just been here. I've been one full-time one and a half years, isn't it? So yeah, most people have more than that. So we went on this, we started from three, started calling all these people on here. And, on the and saying, go through what you said again. So we call them, um, good afternoon, blah, blah. We, you know, how are you doing? All the, you know, nice things. We say that and say, just to let you know, you know, you wanted to join Genestar, you couldn't join. And um, the IBA fee from 140 has been reduced to 40 pounds. As you know, it's a fantastic opportunity to come in and, you know, get your money working as hard for you as you work for yourself. So that is the narrative. And then this particular person was the one who joined was Esther. So Esther now told us, even Ethel is not active in the business. So it was one of my um, field trainers who called. So I've put it under the field trainer. Because Estelle, Ethel is not active in the business. I think she's even been taken off, right? But then Esther wanted to join because she said, oh, I've received my document from the home office. So it's gone under Shimon now. Mm -hmm. So that list, that's not that's that that's a list of people who didn't join them. Yes. So that's the list of people who didn't join. Some people you just even put their details on, you didn't even register them at all. Some people who got to the end, they said, I don't have the 140 pound. Some people didn't have the right ID. Right? But we are revisiting that list and, and telling them what Jenister. I know she won't book an, um, a financial game plan from one of them as well. She said, no, 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 I don't want to join. But at that point, I wanted a financial game plan. Mm. Uh, it was never done. Mm. So I think she's seeing the person tomorrow mm. from that same list. So we have to just make use of whatever we have available. So when people say we don't have anybody to call, no, you have so many people to call on the system before even the MI and all those things come, there's a lot. Go back on your client's database. You know, client, people who just were clients but never joined the business, present it to them again. You know, fuel prices have gone up. Things are changing. Look at what's happening in the economy, house prices, inflation at a very high. But we've got this opportunity where you can earn extra income. The magic question, going back to them and presenting it. You know, in that process, people are telling me, yeah, I want to even review my life cover. Because after COVID, people are now open to all these things. <clears throat> A lot of people have lost loved ones. People have lost their jobs. They made redundant. Don't know where they are going in life. Martin Lewis announced yesterday that uh, on a podcast that uh, he's got the economic data and that uh, it's been already agreed that fuel prices will go up by 65% in October. Wow. Yeah, so it's already gone up by 50%. Yeah. We are already feeling the pinch. Yeah. Yeah, so um, but celebrate that. When you ring somebody and say, would you like to earn some extra income? They're more likely to say yes now, right? Mm -hmm. Or even to come and listen. Yeah. getting them to listen is the most important because when they come in we'll do you know once we show them also you know and being smart about your business you know mm. i was telling i think i was telling steve something okay, um, on a thursday meeting that you know even when people come for the iba 
Now I'm doing everything in one appointment uh, for the, sorry, the bomb. I'm using the short bomb, right? The 20 minutes one. I'm using, if it's a man, I'm being honest, I'm using um, um, SVP Roger, Roger's one video, or if it's um, a woman, sometimes I'm, depending on the person, I'm using um, Barbara Anderson's one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the appointment, I book it. Sometimes it's been booked for 30 minutes to an hour. When they are happy to go ahead, I sign them straight away. I do the follow up and everything. So we need to just maximize every opportunity. Don't just say I'm following the format. So now when they watch the bomb, I will follow up and I'll book them in. No. I present them to. So yeah, the opportunity is here to join. We can do it now. You know, and then I go on to, by that time, I've already opened the registration on the screen for them so that I can save some time as well and maximize the opportunity that I have. Because if people are ready, why do I want to book another appointment? It's with me anyway. So if you don't have a lot going on, do the bombs yourself with the person one-on-one. -on -one. Because sometimes to full, especially the sun is out, you call them, oh, I haven't watched it. Oh, I'll watch it another time. Oh, I couldn't join. No. I am doing it face to face with you on Zoom. Blocked that one hour. We watch the bomb. I recruit you because it's 40 pounds from 140 pounds. Okay, you want the yeah. Barbara's version? I'll send you Barbara's version. Yeah, I can push. I've, I've got it. I've got it, Barbara. I can send it. Yeah. Post it on the, on the Flintstones, Kaz. Yeah, I think it's already on there, but I'll double check. I'll repost it. Hey, Betty, um, yesterday on our. Uh, training we had Sharon Gordon uh, not yesterday sorry Saturday and um, yeah, she, she was absolutely excellent uh, we, we we're just wondering if you're free on September the 10th for team training September the 10th is a Saturday yeah September should be fine but I'll confirm that Check that would be awesome you. if you would thank you so much thank you great Right. Yeah. Awesome, Betty. I feel uh, I feel like a proud proud granddaddy having helped to hire Alan Palmer, and then and then you you've just been very yeah. honest, very vulnerable, and uh, I'm just so proud that uh, you're doing so well and have inspired us today. Thank you. Oh, uh, and you know, it's at the convention I got to know you were uh, my granddaddy as well. <laughs> <laughs> I have two granddaddies. <laughs> Uh, Kevin, I, I'm coming. I'm I'm coming for you now. <laughs> you're my granddaddy. You're, 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 you're welcome, my grandchild. You're welcome. You need, you need to show me one or two secrets. <laughs> okay. He's got a great dance he can show you. Really? <laughs> I saw that. Listen, I saw that at the convention. I said, whoa, go, 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 Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and he never stopped. <laughs> that, that Irish man knows how to dance. Yeah. <laughs> I hear a story about the very first time I met Betty Hammond. Okay, so she'd already become an EVP at this point because it was during lockdown. And we had a meeting in Vitality, and uh, uh, we were in their head office and uh, in their boardroom, and we just had a great presentation by these people. And uh, as we were all funneling out to go to lunch, uh, Betty's on the phone to one of her team. And uh, I heard one of her team say, okay, okay. Because we obviously we haven't seen, uh, seen each other. Uh, nobody met any each other at that point. And one of her team said, who's the hottest? Who's the hottest uh, guy? Is it Daryl or is it Bevin? And she went, Steve Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Steve has never been the same ever since. Certainly that. made his day. <laughs> made my life, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> made my life. <laughs> uh, uh, I've got to run. I've got a half past ten. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Steve.